Well, good evening, y'all. <clears throat> it's about 11 o'clock p.m. And I just finished a little marathon of prayer with Mom and Dad. We prayed Vespers. Um, we had Mass and then Compline. So evening prayer, Mass, night prayer, we've, we've had it going on. And I'm getting ready to go to the caboose for the night. Tomorrow I go back to my parish. Bernadette is woofing at monsters. <laughs> but I'm going to the train station because I need to make sure that my um, uh, train layout, the power is turned off to it. So now that I pay my own light bill, <laughs> I'm a little more conscious about these things. I just wanted to reflect with y'all a little bit as I walk and um, <clears throat> reflect with you on some thoughts and reflections I've been pondering on. So the other night, uh, Father Mike and I went to some parishioners' house uh, for supper, and they asked us what our favorite thing about priesthood was. And Father Mike talked about the beautiful privilege that we get to have walking with people on their journeys. And I agreed with him on that. And then I took it a step further. I said, I love being able to walk with people on their journeys and then take them to the edge of the universe. Because that's what we priests do. During the Eucharist, especially during the Mass, during the high point of the Mass, which is actually the doxology where we sing through Him and with Him and in Him. You know that prayer? Literally, that is when heaven meets earth. The priest takes his people to the edge of the universe. That's pretty powerful. And the more I got to thinking about it later, I realized my life, even as a child, was preparing me for this. When I was little, I couldn't play video games. I couldn't do sports like other kids, since I'm blind. And so my closest friends and I, uh, my best friend Anna and I, we made up our little imaginary world on our farms. We used to imagine that our farms were islands. And there was dinosaurs and monsters and and on my island, my farm, which I'm walking on now, uh, you all have seen me hike on my mountain. Well, um, in my imaginary world, the mountain that I hike on is just the foothill of my volcano. And in our imaginary world, we did not have control of it. Sometimes the volcano would threaten us with eruption. Um, monsters and things would threaten to kill us. <laughs> And we would have to ask for the help of our good monsters to fight the bad ones and to protect us. And even though Anna and I were the rulers of our island, I was the prince, she was the princess, <clears throat> we didn't have full control of everything. And reflecting on that now as a priest, I see how my imaginary world prepared me for being a priest because now, I am operating in the reality, even though I can't always see it. We don't always see it. That reality of good and evil, the angels and the demons fighting, and the demons trying to get at us. And we have to ask for the intercession of the angels and saints to protect us. And now, with this coronavirus business going on, you know, I'm having to deal with that as a priest to protect my flock and my parishioners. And I don't have control of this stuff. You know, we don't. But at the same time, there's beautiful things. You know, in, our, in my little imaginary world, we had our little rituals, our secret rituals and things that only we knew. And the things that made us close. And we shared those things, and they were fun. And as a priest, 
I get to partake in sacred rituals. But the difference is, it's real. It's real. Every time that I take the host and the chalice and say those beautiful words of consecration, <clears throat> that's not pretend. That is real, you all. That is real. And as I pray, especially Eucharistic Prayer 1, which is the oldest one of the Roman Church, and it talks about Abraham, our father in faith, Abel, Melchizedek, the high priest, the apostles, the early martyrs. I am partaking in something that is going all the way back to the beginning of time. And when I come to that big doxology, the great doxology, through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. When we pray that prayer, we stand on the edge of the universe with all those people that went before us. And it's real. It's not a made-up ritual. It's organic. It grew from the beginning of time, from God himself. Take comfort in that. And even more so now, there's a lot of people that are not able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist right now. So I challenge us to ponder on what and who the Eucharist really is. Long for that and look forward to when all of us together can receive him again. So until then, we priests will take you to the edge of the universe even if you can't be in the congregation with us, we still carry you all and your intentions in our hearts. And we take you with us. Remember, it will be okay. God bless you all.